I underestimated the Midas MR18 mixer. Hear me out. A few months ago, I installed an MR18 for my church to replace the old Mackie analog mixer because it was pretty limiting and frustrating. You only had one semi-parametric EQ and two aux sends. That's it. So we got a digital mixer. We've been using it for three or almost four months now. It's great. We mix on our phones. I love it. However, it has limitations. It only has eight XLR outputs, and I'm using four of them for the speakers to do delay speakers because we have speakers in the front, speakers in the back. Although it does not have output delays as a feature, I figured a way to do it, and I'll link the video up here. I made a whole video about it. I still have four XLR outputs for monitors. And most of the time, we have just three musicians and one worship leader, so that's four monitors. Fine, we don't need more than that. But when we need more, we'll have to share monitors. And it's not really ideal because when you're sharing monitors with someone else, you will have always someone that is louder and happy and the other one is frustrated because they can't hear themselves properly. So I was thinking, how can we expand on that? Or can we at all? And in the past, we couldn't because the MR18 doesn't have a S50. You can't connect it to stage boxes. However, almost a year ago, I remember, Midas announced the Stage Connect interface these 16 output or 16 input boxes or 8 in, 8 out that are primarily made for the Behringer wing that has Stage Connect. If you don't know what that is, it's basically you can pass multi-channel bi-directional audio and MIDI and power through a normal XLR cable, which is great. That's impressive. But I didn't really care about it back then because I don't have a wing. I never used a wing. It's not going to benefit me in any way. However, yesterday, I thought about it, and I was like, you know what, I'll just go on the Midas website and read what they have to say about it. And it has alternate connectivity. What else has alternate connectivity? The MR18. So you have in the mixer 16, in the mixer, in the mixer, 16 built-in extra outputs that you can use, but you don't have XLR plugs to use them. So, think with me. If I get a DN4860, if I get this box and connect it through alternate to the mixer, I can have 16 more XLR outputs that I can assign to pretty much whatever I want. I'm in the MAIR edit app and I'll go to the in-out routing menu and you have your input routing matrix, pretty self-explanatory. USB returns, which is the audio that comes from your computer into your mixer. The USB sends, which is the audio that you record from your mixer into your computer. You have the aux out, which is the monitors, basically, and the main out, which is the physical XLR outputs for the main left and right on the mixer. And it's pretty limited. You can't really do much with it. And then you have the alternate page, which you probably didn't even look at, because I would assume if you have this mixer that you don't have the P16 personal monitors, because a few of them cost more than the mixer. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That alternate page is almost exactly the same as the alternate page on your bigger M32 or X32 console. You can assign pretty much whatever you want to these 16 outputs. You have an extra 16 outputs on this mixer that exist. The mixer can give you 16 outputs. You just don't have physical XLR plugs to connect cables to and speakers to, right? So if you get this DN4816 and you connect it via alternate to your MR18, you can pretty much have 16 extra outputs. Just plug it right here into the alternate input, and you set it right here, the switch to alternate. And now these 16 outputs right here are these 16 alternate outputs. So think with me, what can you do with that? You can have extra monitor mixes. Because if you look here, you have, yeah, you have the direct out from the channel, the aux in, the buses, but also you have the effects. Wherever it says effect, like this, these are the effect sends. So this is the sends bus. And when you have FX like this, one left right, two left right, these are the effects returns. Okay, so if I want extra monitors, I can have four extra monitors because I have four effects buses that I can use technically for monitors if I want. I can 
just ignore the effects. I can sacrifice the effects and use these for monitors. So I set alternate one to effect one, alternate two, effect two, alternate three, four, four. So right now on the first four outputs of this, one, two, three, four, I have the effects buses. And you can find the effects buses right here. If you click on the effect and select it, that's the effect bus. You can also make a page for it if you want. So I'll go to utility, user one. I'm going to click on the check mark right here. And these are the effect sends. One, two, three, four. You have four of them. And as you can see, you don't have any processing on them. This is the channel strip. It has nothing. Right here, you can see what exists. Sends, compression, EQ, gate. I'll add something else just so you can see right here. So these buses don't have any processing. I'll even go here to show you. There's nothing. Okay, you can't insert anything on them. They don't have processing. However, you can use them for things that don't have microphones in front of them. So you can use them for keyboards, electronic drums, guitar, in-ear monitors, things that don't feed back. And the good thing about that is that for each one of these four effects buses, you have a tap point. So you can send it pre-fader, which is the most common tap for monitors. You can send it post-EQ, pre-EQ if the musician doesn't like your EQ, or input as it comes in, goes out. You can use these for monitors. So right now, instead of having just six monitors, because you only have six buses, right? You have now 10 monitors on this little mixer. And you can use the other alternate outputs also for other things. And if you decide to use one of the sense buses or all of them for monitor mixes, make sure to turn off the effects returns because you don't want your monitor mix to get back into your main mix. So select the return and go to the main tab and turn off the main left right button. So you remove it from your main mix to avoid any possibility of getting it back. Because even if you have your faders low, just in case, right? So lower your faders, turn off the main left right button. And that way you'll make sure that your monitor mixes just go to the monitors and don't get back into your mix. So you can technically have 10 separate monitor mixes and 24 physical XLR outputs that you can have a lot of flexibility to assign things to them. It's great. So is it still a good idea to buy an MR18 or XR18 in 2023? Yeah, because right now you, ha you can expand on it for I would say an affordable price. It's not exactly cheap, $380, but it's not as expensive as buying a bigger, fancier console and spending thousands of dollars. So right now, it's not available yet in my country, so I can't, I can't get it yet eventually, but I know that in the future, I can expand on that setup, and it's not a waste of money. It's still really capable.